Hi, this is Matt. I'm here with Reed and we're going through some more Spectrum troubleshooting tips. And this video is going to review, well, the, um, the internal components of your Spectrum machine and give you a high level of some of the more common things that might go wrong with that that might be causing some of your problems to, well, uh, help you troubleshoot in the event you need to do some troubleshooting. So one of the things that will frequently happen, not frequently, but will sometimes happen with your Spectrum machine is the tab will be on, the arrow's moving up and down, but you're not getting any joy. Your, your, your arms aren't moving or the seat's not moving. You're like, what could possibly be going wrong? Usually that means that there's something that the, from the power plug into the wall into the machine has gone wrong and there are a few fail points in the machine that might be going wrong. Some other indicators of, of what might be wrong are we got called phantom loading where there'll be just load appearing when nobody's touching it or arms that kind of jick around like this that are just really erratic in their movement. All things could be pointing to loose connections inside of your machine. So I'm gonna take you through what is our normal tech support process on this. That's a Q&A over the phone that will hopefully make it easier for you um, to diagnose. And so the easiest part, uh, we covered how to remove the panel, but oftentimes what happens is outside of the machine. Um, this surprisingly is often a troubleshooting problem. The plug's unplugged. Um, this plug will plug into the next set of uh, next piece of black cable that will plug into the wall. This may become loose. So do yourself a favor, check that easy fail point first. Check the plug in the wall. Check that the plug in the wall, uh, the outlet in the wall has power. Take something you know works, plug it in, make sure it lights up. Um, so those are the real easy ones. I've seen a burned out, just a failed power strip. So the power strip's there, it's clicked on, but uh, no power. So start outside of the machine, and then if that's not working, then we work our way into the machine. Um, one other troubleshooting tip, I like to say this in all the videos, because it's a really easy one, just unplugging the USB connection that you have up on your tablet and replugging it often helps. It's a little bit of a loose connection, so just depending on how that's handled during the regular operation of your piece of equipment, sometimes unplugging it and replugging it will uh, you know, basically reconnect what might be a poor connection. Also, doing that resets the drivers in it, and when you do that, that will sometimes clear up a problem if for some reason one of the drivers became corrupt. Another really easy step, I always try to do that before you get into taking apart your machine. So once you have the panels removed, let's take a look around what we have inside. So primarily, I mean, and this happens pretty routinely, you have, um, on most models, you'll have a split cable that comes in for power. These two plugs right here come unplugged. That's really it. And they come unplugged a little. I mean, sometimes it'll just be part way. And so you just got to pay attention to that, make sure it's seated correctly. I believe during the manufacturing process, they try to zip tie or electrical tape these, but they, they may not have. I don't forget, I forget which and where in the process they may have started doing that. So step one, and this is very frequent, particularly after shipping and Reed usually captures this when um, it ships um, and it's a problem, he'll immediately identify that replug it for you and electrical tape it so it reduces the likelihood of it happening again. So that's space one for a uh, connectivity issue. The second is this, I call it a, uh, a four color plug, but it's really only two colors, but it has four power points on each end of it that engage. This actually comes unplugged pretty easy. There's a little bit of weight on it as the actuator's moving around. Sometimes it'll bump up against it or something like that. And so this comes unplugged or even becomes slightly unplugged. And when that happens, it might make for an inconsistent connection in one of those four connector points. So you wanna make sure that's fully seated and plugged in. And the manufacturing process now zip ties that together. So it's uh, um, not as likely as a failure point, but it can still get loose even when it's zip tied. So uh, we always just have you check that to make sure it's seated well enough. And if you look at where these wires connect into the adapter itself, 
It's a wire that seats in there and is uh, held in place by that screw. That screw tightens each wire that's in there. I've seen where these wires are actually loose. It'll be loose sitting in that space where it connects. And just from moving it around slightly, it'll be connected and it'll work fine. And then it'll move and then it'll just not be touching where it needs to. And it'll cause some really erratic performance on the movement of the arms or the registration of load. And so when you're in here trying to troubleshoot, you'll check to see if each one of these wires is seated. I'll literally pull on each one to make sure it is fully and firmly seated in there. Wrap that sucker in electrical tape when you're finished, just so you're not having to troubleshoot that again. Um, another failure point I've seen is um, I think some models did not have the screw securing this plug for this um, wire into the uh, control box here. And so sometimes that will be loose. I've actually seen where there was a, um, a short in the wire or something that required the replacement of that wire. Um, that is the very high level of what's, uh, what, what to look for when you're doing this. Other things that, that may go wrong is there could be a failure in any one of the three main components. Um, you have a control box here. And we've had to replace a couple of those in the history of all the Spectrum sets out there. I think we've had to replace one actuator arm. Um, and then uh, this, yeah, this is an actuator arm that moves the equipment around. And this is a load cell that actually registers the, um, the force that's being applied. And so um, we'll have other videos on these. We, do, we really don't make videos on those just because it's not a failure that occurs that often that we need to send you a video on, but um, um, those are things that could happen that we may have you inspect a little more closely to see if there are issues with it. Now, one thing about all the Spectrum equipment is all the guts of the Spectrum, they're all the same. They all have an actuator, a load cell, um, a load cell down here, an actuator load cell, and a control box. The other piece of hardware that, that has sometimes had a problem is this blue um, USB adapter. Okay, and that comes up out and it plugs in here and there's actually um, some firmware loaded onto that adapter so you can't just go out of the store, the store and buy one. It's something that can actually become corrupt or fail and we've had to re replace a couple of those in the history of the Spectrum equipment. Um, again, pretty, pretty easy to resolve, but that's what can go wrong. Now, despite these all being the same, the layout of the equipment is actually a little different and so, uh, Reed, what's, uh, why don't you show us what the, where the power part is over here. So the power adapter for the Ever TT, it's not going to be in your back panel where everything else is. So a few times that people have uh, come unplugged, they're moving their equipment. So all you want to do is you'll see your black power cable. It'll usually be just kind of up in the neck right here. So if you need to, just kind of dangle down just a little bit. And just see this was almost about to come loose in this machine so push that back in and then you just tuck it right back up in there and put the extra cord in and it sits right in there all by itself okay all righty so that's an overview of the inner workings of the spectrum machine you really learned just about everything that can go wrong typically with a spectrum machine so hopefully this helps with any troubleshooting that might come up and any questions at all you can always call support we're here to help